Welcome to Backyard Bushcraft. I'm Justin Schmitz with MSCR's Outdoor Programs. And on this part of the video series, we're going to be starting a campfire. Okay, this is part of a three-part video series. First two were collecting wood in wet or winter conditions. The second was splitting that wood with a knife, culminating in actually getting a campfire started. Okay, now the skills that I've taught in these videos are ideal for very poor conditions, whether it's wet, very wet outside, or it's winter, where good, dry, bone dry fire. Firewood is hard to come by. So these are great skills to practice, uh, even in good conditions, so that when you do get in poor conditions, you can still start a campfire really handily. Okay, so the materials we're going to need to get started today are going to be a fire pit, a fire ring, or a fire grate. Okay, if you don't have one of these, you can also, for not very much money, pick up just a stainless steel dog bowl. Okay, these will be, this is pretty small, but a much bigger one you can definitely use to get a, a fire started. We're gonna need our tinder, our kindling, and our fuel. We're gonna need something to start the fire with, matches or a lighter. And finally, we're gonna need plenty of snow or water to put that fire out. A couple of safety notes about fires. When you're using public spaces or public land, only make fires in designated areas and where it's allowed. Make sure you have plenty of water or snow nearby to put your fire out. Do not leave a fire unattended. Okay, and finally, when you put that fire out, make sure that it is cool to the touch. Okay, completely out. Now the steps you're gonna take to prepare to make a campfire, first are collecting your firewood, processing your firewood down into tinder, kindling, and fuel, and finally, organizing your firewood by the size so it's easily accessible when you're making your fire. Now there are three essential elements when making a fire. Heat, fuel, and oxygen. Without all three of these elements, you will not keep a fire going or even get it to ignite. Okay, so we'll start with heat. What do I mean by heat? Well, in order to start a fire, you're going to need a heat source, whether it's a spark, a match, or a lighter to get the fire going. Okay, fuel, that's going to be your wood or other combustible stuff that you're going to be feeding into the fire. And finally, oxygen. Okay, fire needs oxygen to breathe. So while you're making a fire, it's really important that you don't smother it that you don't lay your wood parallel to each other, okay? You wanna lay things crosswise. So there's plenty of airflow going between the wood and around the wood in order to feed the flame. Okay, let's start building our campfire. So there's many different methods uh, for building your basic campfire. There's the cone or teepee method. There's the log cabin method and so on. There's many effective ways, but today we're gonna do the cone method. Now I've talked about how we're gonna be doing this and you know, wet or poor conditions. So maybe our fire ring or fire pit is a little moist from rain or whatever, snow. So what we want to do is build a little platform to build our fire on using our kindling or our fuel so that we're not building directly on top of a bunch of moisture. <clears throat> Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our tinder and we're gonna ball it up into what we call a bird's nest. A nice little ball of tinder. Okay. All right, and there's lots of air that can flow through there. So that's gonna be really helpful later. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is starting to build our teepee over the top. So we're gonna find our smallest stuff first that we have and start laying it across, making a teepee or cone shape to it. And I'm always looking at places. I'm not laying anything parallel. Okay, I'm laying everything, finding nice gaps to make this teepee. That can be a little unstable at times, but that's okay. Sometimes stuff falls over and you just gotta start over, but it won't take that long really. And I think that'll do for the teepee. There's plenty of air gaps all the way around it for the air to come in and fuel that fire as it eats up that tinder and starts igniting the kindling. Now I'm gonna take a moment and go around so you can see all from all sides how this cone or teepee looks as you put it together. Again, I haven't gone too thick with the kindling. Plenty of air space for that fire to grab the oxygen as it takes off. 
So the next step, let's get this yeah, fire going. Strike a match or use my lighter. I'm gonna be very careful while I do this so I don't burn my hand. It's nice having these long matches. I'm gonna light in multiple spots. And here goes nothing. Now this is a critical time in fire starting and lighting in multiple spots. It looks like it's taken off nice. I'm gonna let it burn for a little while. Let's see if it gets the kindling. And this is a crucial time in fire tending, watching and make sure it's gonna keep going and adding fuel as needed. My guess here, just been looking at it, I don't think we're gonna need a whole lot more tinder. I'm going to start finding some other pieces of kindling start adding to this fire. You want to be really careful. You might want to wear gloves while you're doing this. And being really careful not to get, knock it over. I'm trying to reiterate again, I'm always going in those gaps. Okay, I'm never laying anything parallel or right next to each other. I'm always going around in the circle, find the next place where I can lay the kindling over crosswise, or crossways over. Beautiful. Started like a champ. So it's at this point, I'm gonna let it just keep burning some of this kindling. What it's gonna do is it's really gonna get this fire established. And this fire started beautifully. Okay, I'm gonna keep adding kindling. I'm not gonna add anything too big yet. What I wanna do really is I wanna get a lot of kindling on there over time so it creates coals before I start adding the bigger stuff. Eventually also, this is gonna to topple over. That's just part of it. It's probably not gonna stick up like that forever and that's okay. But yeah, that is a nice, well-established fire. You can kind of tell, I mean, it's starting to lean more to my right. So I'm gonna start putting some stuff over on the right to keep it from totally collapsing or otherwise it's just going to collapse. But that's, that's totally fine, that is totally expected. It's actually at this point, now I'm gonna start looking for places to put my fuel, my larger wood, while also adding some more kindling. You gotta keep adding the small stuff in the beginning just to keep that fire going. Just notice I'm never laying anything directly next to each other parallel because I want to make sure that the fire can come up through the gaps. If I were to take this piece and lay it right next to it so it was parallel, it's just not going to be as good as if I had left lots of gaps. <clears throat> At this point, you no longer have to make it more of a teepee. You're just looking for great spots to lay, uh, lay wood crossways across each other. Yeah, and then at this point, this is a great time. At this point, you can add stuff this big. It's now it's now caught enough. It's got plenty of kindling there to keep it going and enough kindling to light some of this fuel. And there you go. We've got a rip roar fire ready to go. Warm yourself up in those wet winter conditions. Okay, so remember, all you really need if you're out in the woods is a knife uh, and some matches and you can get this started. You can even forego the saw. The wood doesn't have to be cut in those in those fine pieces. They could just be broken and still use this technique. So make sure you check us out for our next video. It's gonna be the handiest knot to use while camping. We'll see you then. And for my final note, I do have some leave no trace principles I'd like to impart. First off, make sure when you do start a fire, whether it's in uh, public spaces or in public land, that you're in existing designated fire pit or fire ring. Uh, and that fires are allowed. If you're going to be collecting wood, we've already covered this, but only collect dead and down wood, okay? Any live or green wood, okay, is useless for starting fires anyway, but we wanna leave stuff that's living, living, okay? And finally, when you're all done with this fire, make sure you douse it with a lot of water or snow, okay? Stir it up with a stick, douse it with more water, put your hand over the top of it. If you don't feel any heat coming off of it, you're good to go.